Okay. I think that it worked. Um, looks like it worked. All right. Well, um, welcome everyone to the Durban Shot Podcast. Uh, this is the eighth episode, but it is season two. So it's the first episode of season two because the season just started. So I thought we'll just start on a fresh. Thank you all for tuning in. <laughs> I know this is, uh, it took quite a while to get going, uh, you know, three takes. But we're here, you know, I've got some water to stay hydrated. And uh, hopefully this podcast won't be too long. Uh, I, try to, I, I try to aim them at around the 30 minute mark, because I feel like that's ideal for everyone listening to, to listening in to not get too bored. Uh, and obviously, depending on the topics, you know, Sometimes I can talk more, sometimes I can talk less. But nonetheless, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, as you know, the past few days have been extremely hectic around Barcelona, uh, both with the uh, the Mocio de Censura and also with uh, Serginho Dest. Uh, talks about Memphis Depay, now talks about Usman Dembele. Um, it's, 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 it's been quite a few days. And... Uh, one thing I want to say is, first of all, we're obviously uh, very happy with the reporting that we've done over on Blog and Agram. Um, we think, personally, we think we've done a great job. We've reported, um, especially on the desk case, we've been on point. Um, really couldn't wish for anything better than that. And obviously, that's something we hope to continue. Um, you know, we're, we're in a great stride right now. I've got big things coming. And... We just want to thank you all for your support. The fact that you're tuning into this um, obviously means a lot to us. And we want to reconnect with um, the fan, the, the part of the audience that we feel that we somehow lost along the way. That's something we want to try and remedy. And so that's why this podcast is back. And in a live format, hopefully we can interact with you guys a bit more. Um, so Maske Pelotas, my good friends from Maske Pelotas, thank you for, for tuning in and thank you for uh, sharing our exclusive uh, Marcus Berg, uh, the, our news aggregator, Facebook editor, uh, thanks for tuning in. Amr, uh, thank you for tuning in, bro. Uh, nice to see you again. Uh, Aina, our editor uh, on Blogonogram, thank you for tuning in. And, uh, you know, let's, um, what we got? Let's let's talk about Sergio Dest. Um, you know, it's, it's a case that a lot of people have been talking about. Um, a lot of the news outlets have been reporting on it. Um, we've been trying to only report what we get from our sources, uh, because our sources have been proven to be reliable and they have not let us down. Uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's great. We've, uh, two days ago, we reported that the agreement between Barca and IX was indeed a full agreement. It was completed. And as things went on, obviously we kept, um, reporting the things that we knew were true. And it paid off. So, obviously, that's great. Sergio is currently on his way to Barcelona, more or less. Uh, he should be in Barcelona at some point tonight. Uh, he'll sleep at a hotel, probably. Uh, which, you know, you could have guess. He's not going to sleep on the street. Um, so, that's, uh, that's, that's something. Um, but, you know, the, the idea is that tomorrow he is presented as a Barcelona player, uh, at least in terms of the contract. I don't think that they'll announce it tonight just because it's as late as it is. But um, we did see Inter Milan announce Arturo Vidal quite late through a teaser. So if that's what the club have in mind, especially considering how much hype there's been around this situation, I wouldn't be surprised. But I, quite frankly, I think if I think he will be announced tomorrow. Um, I, I would be surprised if it was announced tonight. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see. One thing I do know for sure is if everything goes according to plan, he will sign his contract tomorrow until 2025. So that's a five-year contract with a uh, for a sum of 22 million euros, more or less, plus some add-ons depending on performances, certain clauses, um, as usual. And on Friday, he will be presented at the Camp Nou. So that's uh, the plan. And if that plan doesn't change, that is what will happen. So, I just want to interact a bit with the chat here. Uh, I'm sorry if I butcher any of your, any of your names. That is not the intention. Um, 
thank you for tuning in and and I sent my my you know my, my warmest thoughts to Nigeria and everyone in Nigeria. Uh, I'm a football this week, so I'd be surprised if he's left on the streets of Catalonia. Yeah, I would be too. Um uh, Jorge, greetings from Colombia. Greetings to you too, my friend. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you are enjoying this so far, drop a like, subscribe if you haven't already, turn on the bell notifications. We are going to be here uh, every week, and I'm currently working on some sort of schedule so you guys know that at this time, on this day of the week, we will be live. Uh, as things stand, I am going to be the only host. Um, if that changes, obviously, we will announce it, but... Uh, that's that's how things are right now, and that's something I'm pretty happy with. Although, as you might be able to tell, it is quite difficult to keep going for half an hour um, without it getting boring for you guys. So that's why the idea is that I will have some guests coming on occasionally, and maybe you could be one of those guests. So if you'd like to be a guest on the Driven Shot podcast or any of the other podcasts on the Blargana Brand Podcast Network, I will leave a link in the description below um, when this stream is done. Uh, because I forgot to do it at first because I had to do three takes at this. But, um, you know, if, you, if you'd like to voice your opinions uh, through our platform um, on the podcast, give it a go. Send us an email or, you know, send us a DM, whatever you prefer doing, and we'll, uh, we'll take a look. Maybe we can, we can make something happen. Because, again, we want to connect with you guys again. It's something that we, that we like about what we do. Um, so yeah, that's something to keep in mind. If you'd like to voice your opinion through us, that is an option. Um, so do hit us up and we'll see what we can do. Um, what else? Um, also, if you would like some blog Radagram merchandise, I am wearing some right now. This is quite an, uh, this is not the new edition. We do have some new merch, um, on the website. If you'd like some. Use code TDSHPOD for 15% off. Now, uh, as for the chat, people are very happy, which is obviously great. Um, Zayn, Shatari, Yomar, how are you? How are you? It's been it's been a while, man. How are you doing? Hello, hello. I'm Barca Kenya from Kenya. Nice to meet you, Barca Kenya. Thank you for the support. Um, Fred says, can I get a <laughs> um, Let's see. Tosha... Tushar saying, what can we expect from Dest as we saw the last game? With the right one was damage and cover. Dest would be better than Griezmann and Rabasco. Um, Tushar is one of the editors on Blogonogram. Um, so thank you for tuning in. Asking what we can expect from Sergio Dest, um, especially now that the right wing is, to put it mildly, in some cases it is a bit lackluster. So maybe with, uh, with yeah, as you said, with Francisco Trincao, I think. I think Dest could provide something really good, um, some some dynamism. I think he is he is a solid defender and he's a good he's good going forward. Um, so I I th I think I do think Dest will be a very good addition to this Barcelona squad. And with a player like Trincao, who we've seen is a very creative outlet, uh, maybe even if Pedri plays there, I think that could be very interesting um, for sure. So yeah, I think I think Dest will be a good addition to this Barcelona side, and especially with some with some players, you know, some players that were rumored to leave uh, are staying. Example, Martin Braithwaite. Um, I remember a lot of outlets were talking about how he was leaving to West Ham and how uh, something about a deal almost being agreed, uh, where we said no, he's not going to leave, um, and we were right. He's staying, and he's excited for the new season. And, uh, you know, I think for me, I, I think his, his attitude has been admirable. Um, he is, he, he's a good footballer. He really is. And, you know, I think the work rate that he's shown and the, the mentality that he's shown is definitely something that will make him a good asset for Barcelona. So that's something to be excited for. Uh, you know, Barcelona have a lot of good names, both on the bench and, on, and in the starting lineup. So, I think that's definitely something of interest because I've seen a lot of people talk about how the Barcelona squad maybe isn't as um, as good as other squads. And for me, I think the squad is pretty good. If Ronald Koeman can work out a formula that makes these players click together, I think this season could be a really good one. Um, you just need Messi to get, you know, get back to – enjoying football and enjoying football with Barcelona. If he can do that again, 
Uh, and you can – Ansu Fati just hit the ground running this season with a brace. Uh, Coutinho has been, in my opinion, a very good addition. And I think he, he's shown a different version of the player we saw before he moved to Bayern. Um, I don't know if part of that was the mood in the locker room. Maybe, maybe that had an influence. I feel like that might have influenced how how he was playing. Um and so now I, I think he's he's definitely improved. And we saw with Bayern he he did gain the confidence. He had some some he had you know some period of times where he wasn't that good and then it kind of went up it went upwards again. It's been kind of a roller coaster for him at Bayern. But I think he ended it on a good note with a treble. I mean the confidence you're gonna have going in with that is you really don't need more than that. Um, so, yeah, I think I think he can be a good addition. Got everyone in the chat, let me know which player you think will be the standout for Barcelona. If we exclude Messi, who do you think will be the player that will surprise everyone? Um, I'd like to hear what you guys have to say with regards to that because I feel like there are going to be a lot of split opinions when it comes to that case. Um, you know, I think... One thing I have noticed is that um, Barcelona seems to be more of a of a pressing side now. I know that in the second half they didn't press as much as they did in the first against Villarreal. Part of that you could say, well, yeah, they they don't want to, you know, they don't want to press. But another part of it is also that they don't want to get off to a bad start in terms of the form. They don't want to, you know, get to a point where they've just overworked themselves already in the first game. So they're trying to maybe distribute the energy, um, the stamina. Um, and if that's the case, then, you know, great. Um, I hope that's the case. But I will say, I think since Kuman's appointment, they have shown some positive signs. Um, you know, for me, I don't think Kika Setien was the main issue. Uh, I think the mentality that the, that the players had had for a while, the... Um, and it's not just – it's the mentality, but also the whole idea of how they were playing. Um, you know, we saw it in Roma. We saw it in Anfield. The, the the team was just mentally not there. And they know it, and they've said it. We saw it in the Match Day documentary. I think what they really needed is either fresh blood in terms of new youngsters coming through, which we have seen. Or a new man, or a new manager, not because the old manager wasn't good enough, but maybe just to get a new fresh start. I don't know if that's what they needed. It seems like it's worked in a sense, and obviously it's a bit too early to say anything about it because the season has just started. But you know, you you do see you do see some positive signs already, and that's obviously really that's great. You know, coming into a season where a lot of the big guns uh, around Europe have bought a lot of big names, a lot of the big teams. And the smaller teams have made really good acquisitions. And that, you know, you got to think that will influence, uh, you know, the Champions League. Uh, even though the Europa League doesn't really concern Barca at this point, um, it also influences the Europa League. It influences football all around Europe. And I think even though for some Barca's transfer window this season, this at least this summer, might not have been great for some people, I think they focused – on the right places. Although I do think a center back should be a, a, a it should be a priority in my opinion because Samuel Umtiti just hasn't been in the form that that he used to be in before the World Cup, and I I, I don't think Barca can rely on him too much if Longley gets injured because first off he's off form in terms of the fact that he hasn't had too many games to play, but also the fact that he just doesn't have the same fitness he used to and. You need someone who can make up for that because if long leg gets injured or if you need PK to rest because PK is aging and can't play 90 minutes every game for an entire season, you need someone to replace him or at least be there, even if it's as a makeshift defender. Um, so I, I think I think that's where Barca's focus should be, although if they are focusing on Memphis Depay, that is not a bad idea in my opinion. The only problem I have with Depay coming to Barcelona would be that his playing style um, is similar, in my opinion, to that of you know a Griezmann or a Coutinho or a Messi. I don't see him being the number nine that Barca absolutely need. You know, I, I think 
I think what Barca really need right now, if they do want to get anyone for the front line, shouldn't be a playmaker because they've got plenty of those right now. They've got Coutinho. They've got, um, you know, they've got obviously Messi, Griezmann, Trincao can be a playmaker. Pedri can be a playmaker. You've got Dembele who also could be that role. Fati is good at hold of play. They, that's not the, the profile they should be looking for, you know. And obviously, it's easy enough to say, but you can't look at uh, an Erling Haaland. You can't just go in and say, now we want you because if he just signed for Dortmund. He's not going to leave. Um, you know, Timo Werner just signed for Chelsea. He's obviously not going to leave. Morata just went to Juventus. Um, and, you know, it, it's one of those things where if they really want a striker, they have to just throw their money at that at that forward, and that's not easy to do now, especially after the pandemic. Um, if I was if I was in charge, what I would do is I wouldn't focus on a forward. I would focus on a defender. Then next year, try and get a player like Lautaro or a Gabriel Jesus, a player that's young or at least somewhat young and can play that nine role and has a proven track record, somewhat a proven track record at least. Because then you're not going to get, you know, you're not going to get a player that somewhat fits in and somewhat doesn't. And you'll just end up having, you know, six, seven players that have the same profile and you can't fit all of them in. You're inevitably going to have a team that has unhappy players that's going to influence the dressing room, depending on that player's, you know, status and role uh, in, in the squad. So I think it's very important that Barca don't buy a player just for the sake of buying a player, especially in the front line. Um, so, so that's that's definitely something to consider. Now, the chat is talking about some very interesting things. Um, Tushar says Coutinho. I think I think Coutinho definitely could be a surprising player. I, I, I'm I'm really happy. When, I was really happy when he signed for Barca, and I'm really happy that he came back uh, to Catalonia. And I, I think I think he, he I think he is a player to watch. Uh, Fred says, what about the ball? <laughs> oh, man. Um, if you guys don't know, Fred says and I have a podcast that we will be recording after I'm done with this. It's called the Lost in Translation Podcast. It is on Spotify and all that good stuff. It's a podcast where, where, where we pretty much talk about everything and anything and just have a good old laugh. So if you want to join us, feel free. I believe we have – I think we've hit – we've almost hit double digits. So once you're done with this, if you want to hear me talk, you can – you can look it up. It's on pretty much every platform uh, and on YouTube. So that's uh, that's pretty cool. Now, uh, Boxing Fan 12 uh, says, and that's Barca Kenya, says, where are you from, Bro Holland? If so, what do you think about Depay as he was director of the Dutch team? Uh, first off, I actually live in Denmark. Uh, and second off, as for uh, Memphis, I, I again, I think he's a good player. I really do like him. And I would love to see him at Barcelona. But I just don't think that he is the number nine that they need. Because I think he excels more in a playmaking role, or maybe even out wide. So I I don't think he's what they should be looking at uh, right now. You know, if they need a winger in the future, sure. But I, I don't think he's the answer for the number nine issue that they have, especially now that Suarez went to Atleti. I think they do need a number nine if they want to. If they really want to buy someone for the front line, it shouldn't be a playmaker. It should be a pure nine or a player who can play as a pure nine. Um, and, and the problem is if you if you put someone like Messi in there, you're going to lose him on the creative front. Same thing goes for a player like Ansu Fati, especially considering that that's a lot of pressure to put on. Uh, you know, he's still young. It's a lot of pressure to put on him. Um, so it's, that's also something. Uh, Aina says, I think Ansu Fati will have an incredible season. Also, Pedro and Trinca will impress. And definitely this season will be led by the talented youngsters we have now. Hopefully, Ricky Puj and Kaba Sabanya have protagonism. They have a proper chance. I fully agree. Uh, I think Fati has shown some very promising signs, especially last season. And and, and you got to say, the fact that he got to play with the national team definitely gave him a boost, both both in terms of confidence and in terms of ability. And I think he will be a he truly will be a player to watch. Uh, Pedri and Trincao have also impressed me a lot. Um, and I, from what I've been able to read and hear, they have impressed a lot of Barcelona fans. So that's definitely there. Those are like, I mean, I think again, Barcelona have a lot of really talented youngsters. And if Kuman plays his cards right, I think Barca could have a great season because they have really good squad depth right now. The only place they truly are lacking in, in my opinion, is the defense. So that's that. That's my take on it. And if you agree or disagree, you know. 
please say it in the chat. Uh, let's see. Uh, Boris, I can't. Yeah, I don't believe a question. Sure. Yeah. Holland next season, fifty-five million release clause. I mean, if his release clause is retained and no club goes for him next season, and he is open to leaving, I think Barcelona definitely should give it a go. Obviously, depending on how well he's done with Dortmund up until that point, but I definitely think he he's worth considering. Um, Freddy's from Denmark. Figured out here. Nice. Uh, Davi says about Aitnuri, from what I've seen, and to be honest, I haven't watched him a lot, but he seems like a promising prospect. Uh, and, and if, if he's, if he's not going to be, if he's not going to come for too hefty of a fee, I think he's definitely worth considering. Although I saw someone, yeah, Tushar said that, uh, Miranda deserves a chance, which is what I was about to say. I think Juan Miranda deserves a chance in the, in the first team because, when he's played, I think he's shown positive signs. Uh, he didn't play a whole lot with Schalke, but when he did, he looked okay. He didn't look completely out of place. And with their formation, to be fair to him, it's not easy to fit in a player that's a left back when you have uh, three center backs and two wing backs going back and forth. Um, so I think Kukurea would have fit more in that in that system. But, you know, what can you do? He's back with Barcelona. Um, and, and I think if... I think if Barca would look at a left back and, and Firpo, in my opinion, Firpo hasn't had a proper chance yet. You know, two, three games every now and again isn't really a chance, if you ask me. And I still think he could be good for Barcelona. But if they really don't want Firpo, I think um, I think Miranda should get a chance. But Nuri definitely is an interesting player to watch. Um, but I think, I think it's a bit too early to pull the trigger on that one. Um, Let's see. Yes, play. Uh, yeah. Uh, Shashank Shekar says we should be focusing on a center back, not attacker or midfielder. Fully agree. Uh, Riddy says Riddy is one of our um, one of our editors as well. Nice to see you here. Uh, Garcia next season or wait for him to be a free agent. Uh, Garcia this season or wait for him to be a free agent next season. Um, you know, depends on the. In my opinion, in my opinion, it depends on the fee. If 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 City asks for thirty mil right now, I'd say rather wait. Just wait for next season. If he's willing to wait, I think Barca should wait and just get him for free. Um, and I don't see City being able to just part ways with him as as cheaply. So that's that's obviously something to consider too. I'd say, given what we've seen and read, I think I'd say wait for next season. Um, if it's an expensive fee or wait, I'd rather wait. Should we get Giroud on loan or Isak on loan with an option to buy? Out of those two, I'd probably say Alexander Isak. Um, you know, I, I, yeah, I would probably say Isak. I mean, Giroud does have the experience, and he's a he's a good player. He, I, I genuinely believe he's a good player. Um, but just because of the age, I think Isak would be a better bet because if he does work out, you know, they actually if they have the option to buy it probably wouldn't be very, very expensive. And even if it is, if he has proven himself with Barcelona for a season or for half a season, I think it would be worth the investment. Um, but as for Giroud, even if he does turn out to be a good signing, he's going to be signed for realistically maybe two, three years tops, and that's it. Um, so that's how I feel about that. I, I would I would go for Isak if, if I had to choose between the two. Um, so what else? Uh See, this isn't easy, you know? It's not easy to just sit here for half an hour. But I do enjoy it. I will say that. I do enjoy it, and I'm happy that you guys are here. And hopefully, as we go on with this, more of you will tune in. We'll be able to have a bit more fun together. <laughs> uh, let's see. Shiba Subash. Sonny says, Shabi says he likes Mbappe. Is there any chance we'll go for him? As we have Griezmann and Dembele as bargaining chips to make it easier. Um, I will be honest with you. I... I do like I do like Kylian Mbappe, but I don't see Paris being willing to to just to let him go that easily. And I think another problem is that Griezmann wants to stay, um, which isn't a problem. But if you're talking deal or no deal, it would be a problem because he wants to stay. Dembele has reportedly rejected offers from Liverpool, and uh, I forgot which other club it was. I think Juventus. Um, so he's rejected, he's rejected those. 
Um, and, 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 you know, that's something he wants to stay. So I, I don't think that would ever materialize unless it gets to a point where they just don't get playing time and they're better off in Paris. Another thing is that Griezmann is a huge Marseille fan, from what I recall, and, and I imagine he still is. So I, I don't see him wanting to play for Paris anyways. Um, you know, and, and I, I've, I genuinely believe if Griezmann and Dembele were to leave Barcelona, I don't think they would go to Ligue 1 because they – at least I would hope so, know that their level is higher than than, than most of the teams in Ligue 1 would, would – you know, the competition that they would give them is not as big as the ones they would maybe see in the Premier League or by staying in La Liga. Um, so, you know, I think that's also something to, something to consider. I don't think that either of them would go to, to Ligue 1 if given the chance. Um, so that's, you know, that's that's worth considering too. Um so I so best to answer your question. I don't see that happening. Um, uh, Shashank says if we're going to sign Garcia next season, then we should also try for Kunde. I prefer him. Yeah, I mean, Kunde Kunde has seemed Kunde has seemed you know he's he he's a good player um, from what I've seen, and I feel like I'm just repeating myself saying this player is good, this player is good, um, but you know I think if Barca can get a Defender for you know by not paying a whole lot of money this season, whether that's through a loan or whether that's through a um, you know a, a cheap transfer deal or a free agent, you know I think they should definitely go for that because they do need squad depth. Just one more player in that defense would suffice. And you know you could say yeah, well they have options in Barca B, and while that is true. Let's say Longley or PK get get in. One of them gets injured, and you have a big Champions League fixture. It's you know it's a bit it's a lot of pressure to put on a Barca B player, for instance. So that's that's something to consider. Um, so I think if I think they should go for a defender if they can, rather than go for Depay, and then maybe next year go for Holland or Lautaro if they can get him for a bit cheaper than 100 or 120 million euros. Um, you know, that, I think I think that should be the course of action. Well, obviously, we'll see what happens. Um, you know, it's it, it's this transfer window has been a strange one. And you know, to be completely honest with you, I I, I wouldn't be surprised if Depay ended up in Barcelona. But it's it's tough to say. Tushar says Mbappe to Real Madrid next season, <laughs> maybe. Uh, Shashank, yes, Griezmann is a Marseille fan. You're yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, Barca Kenya says, Hey, bro, I'm gonna leave for a bit and come back. All right, cool, cool, cool. See you in a bit. Let's <clears throat> give me one second, it's gotta get some water. You know, sitting here talking for 28 minutes, you uh, you do get a bit thirsty, you know. Um, let's see, Fadis says, Next summer, Mbappe will be getting into his last year of the contract, and if, if Griezmann has another season. Maybe you could consider it. I assume you mean if he also has a year left. Um, you know that that is something. It's, it's not. It's not. I think for me. Yeah, I don't know if it's lagging. I hope it's not lagging. Um, but yeah, what I was saying was I. It's not a dig on Neymar. For me, Neymar. In my book, remains the one the top you know one of the top two footballers, only second to Messi. In my opinion, I think he's proven himself on the big stages, and um, yeah, I, I think I, I do believe that if he wins the Champions League with Paris at some point, I think that's when he would leave, unless he actually is able to facilitate a move back to Barcelona. Um, and you know, that's something. Would you like to see him back? Let me know. Let me know down below because I know it's it's a topic that really splits the fan base. And I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Uh, how you have all this big information. A magician never reveals his secrets. <laughs> uh, Suba says Laporta or Victor Font. Um, you know, I don't mean to talk a bad, you know, talk in a bad way about anyone or in a negative way. Um, you know, I think, I think I, I, the thing is, I, I feel that they both have. They both. I I do envision Laporta having a good campaign, um, but as for Victor Font, I think he's shown that he is ready for the elections, and in my book, from what I've seen, he seems like he'd be a, definitely an excellent candidate. 
and maybe and I, I do believe he would be a really good president for Barcelona too. Um, you know, but it's it's tough to say. I mean, I would like to see Victor Font just to kind of get someone completely new in because Laporta obviously has been Barca's president and has split the fan base. Um, so I, th I, I think he will have a tough time, a bit of a tough time compared to Victor Font, but you know, it's also about the whole um, continuation candidacy. If, if that comes up too, that's obviously something as well. So I think they will end up taking some votes from each other, which, you know, if they share some of the same ideas, that's not good for either one. But I think they do have, I imagine that they will have campaigns that are different enough to the point where you would look at it and go, yeah, they can't work together. That makes sense. Um Faris meant another bad. Okay, so if 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 Griezmann had another bad season, um, and Mbappe runs into the la the last year of his contract, I think in that case, I feel like maybe, you know, maybe. Um, in my opinion, I don't think Griezmann's season was bad. You know, you got to remember this is a guy that came in from having played for years. As a, as a second striker in a team that plays full-on defensive counterattack in football. And you can see that by the way he presses. He is still in that mindset. And he's, he has been a hardworking player for years. But he's still adjusting. And I know, you know, for 120 million euros signing, you wish more. But no, what do you mean he's adjusting? He's played in the same league for years. Yeah, but the systems are very, very different, you know. Um, I think he just needs that confidence boost. And with, you know, all these youngsters next to him now, if he, I, I, I do believe, I do believe he can get, I do believe he can get that sort of confidence and that spark back. And as soon as he does that, he will be a really good asset for Barcelona. I genuinely believe that. I don't think he's had a bad season. Um, you know, he's just been unlucky. It's a, it's, it's a process of adaptation. And the fact that the club gave him the number seven shows that they still trust him. You know, and, and his teammates have been, from what I've seen, they've, they've, I, I, don't, I haven't seen anyone badmouth him in any way, um, which obviously, you know, you're a teammate, but, you know, he, he, he has shown positive signs, at least in my book. And I think, I think, he, I think he will make up for it this season. Um, Shashank says, for me, the Neymar chapter is over. That's fair. You know, I've, I've again, it's, it's a thing that really, it's a thing that really splits people. So I'm not surprised that that's how you feel. Um, Subas says there are reports that Puyol will support a candidate this election. Who could that, who would that be? That's a very good question. Um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if it was Font just because of, you know, the whole thing with the fact that Xavi supports him. I think maybe that would drag him, but, you know, it's, it's tough to say. Really, it's a 50-50. I'm not going to sit here and say that it's going to be that person and then act like I knew it when it's pretty much anyone's guess. So I don't know. I think, obviously, I, I do believe it's either of the two. I don't think it's going to be one of the continuous candidates, but, you know, we'll have to wait and see. Um, yeah, I misworded it, but when it compares up to his price tag, it may seem disappointing. But to be fair to him, he's played under two different average managers. I really like him. I really hope he succeeds. Fattis says... Um, yeah, no, I mean, I, I'm not saying this to be, you know, the devil's advocate or whatever. I genuinely don't think either of Valverde or Setien are bad managers per se. I don't think they are, you know, average managers. I think they're really good managers in a system that suits them and under, you know, under a certain amount of pressure, they will succeed, you know. But you look at the, you know, Valverde had a good first season. From what I recall, um, you know, and, and things sort of started going downhill from there um, with the with the Anfield games, with the Roma games, you know, and, and you do get to a point where it's it's a standstill. You know, you get a point where, OK, we can't do this anymore. We have to move on. And it's it's the thing with managers. That's why you don't really see many managers stay for too long. And. You know, Valverde left, Setien came in mid-season, was hit by a pandemic right after, right off the bat. You know, Suarez Dembele injured, Brathwaite had to wait to be incorporated, came in, and as soon as he came in, I believe it was one game and then the pandemic hit. 
So it's not been a normal half a season by any standards for Kike Setien. So I don't blame him when the results go, go, you know, don't go his way. And I remember a lot of people were, were you know, attacking him or, or criticizing him for not using the, the youth players enough when he said he would. You know, I think I, I, I do believe, I genuinely do believe that he wanted to use them, but he also knew that he had a lot of pressure on him, you know, and, and it's, it's a thing where you can't risk too much. You know, and I think that's that was the problem for him is that it was about finding that balance between should I risk and put this youngster on, which might not even be a risk. You know, it might not be a risk. Maybe that youngster will perform better than the starter that I've had for the past seven for the last seven games. But it still is viewed as a risk, you know, because you have this player who has tons of experience compared to this player who's just come up from the B team. And you're like, well, who should I play? I'm going to go for the safe option because then. It's not going to be fully my fault if something goes bad. And it's also a player with experience against a team that is experienced in, you know, whatever tournament it is. So I think the problem for Setien was that he just, in my book, I, I don't think he got enough time. And, uh, you know, I, I, I hope that Kuman will get time to show what he can do. Because although his time with Everton wasn't great, I think... You know, he's obviously shown good signs with the Netherlands. They are a really good national team at this point, um, you know, having had some years a bit off the radar. And, you know, you could say, well, why isn't, you know, these are, they are great players. You could, any, any manager could do that job. Uh, you know, look at Argentina. You know, a lot of great players, a lot of big names, but, you, you know, it takes a- actual skill. It takes being a, a genuinely good manager to be able to manage these players. And so I, I hope, I really hope that Ronald Koeman gets enough time, you know, uh, and, and I, I think he can be a success. You know, I just think it's a shame that people see Setien as this guy who lied for, in front of everyone when I'm pretty, I'm pretty, pretty sure that that was not his, his intention whatsoever. He just didn't get enough time to actually put his ideas, you know, into practice. Um, I'm sorry for ranting about that. It's just something that's been on my mind for a while, and I thought I'd get it out. Uh, Fred says, you have my support, Omar. Thank you. Subhas, thank you, Lautaro. Yeah, that joke will just never die, will it? Everyone, everyone thinks that I look like Lautaro. Everyone that I've talked to, at least. Um, Which is, you know, that's pretty cool. Uh, Let's see. Sock. Hi, Sock. Um, Tashank says, no hate against Neymar. I still enjoy him at Paris, but I don't want him back because he brings too much drama. And we had enough in the last three seasons. We will still stay for Laporte or Shelby. They can convince him. What say? Um, yeah, no, I, I don't think Messi is leaving. Um, I really don't. You know, and it's not just me saying that as a fan of Barca and as a, as, as a fan of Lionel Messi's. I just don't see him leaving, you know. Um, <clears throat> when When we had, when, when, when Dean Jones of Bleacher Report made that piece on Messi, um, where both it was me, Marcelo Beckler from uh, Sport Interativo, and um, Andy West. We gave our opinions, and I will leave a link in the description below for that if you are interested. Um, we spoke about you know Lionel Messi and what we thought: would he leave? Would he not leave? Um, I still think that if he was to leave, it would either be now. Or, you know, a long time ago. I think if he was to leave, it would either be now or either after the... Probably not after the Roma game. I would say if he was to leave, it would be after Anfield. Or right now, you know, the month that just passed by. Um, I don't think he'll leave. I really don't. I think it will take him some time to readjust and get into his head that he is going to stay here and kind of try and enjoy himself again. But I, I don't see him leaving. Um, you know, and I, I don't think that, you know, obviously it does depend on who the new president is, what kind of practices he'll put in, which manager he'll put in. But I, I, I think I think that train has passed. I don't see him leaving. I really don't. I think he'll end up retiring with Barcelona. But, you know, obviously that can change. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Um, Fata says, they really just picked up a four-month injury on my career mode. Um you know, he, he has been extremely unlucky with those. You know, at first people said, yeah, it's an, it's an attitude problem. He's not taking it seriously enough. 
And then he started actually getting his act together and he started doing well and then he got injured again. And now it's not even, people aren't even attributing it to his attitude or his lack of professionalism, which in my opinion, he doesn't have it. Like I have, you know, from what I've seen, he seems to actually really be taking it seriously. He really wants to succeed, which is great, but he's just so unlucky at this point. Um, so I really do hope that, that they fit. I really hope they find some solution, you know, whether that's not playing him for 40 minutes, but playing him for 30 instead, but then he can actually play next game and not get injured in the process. Find something that works, you know, because it's, it really is a shame. It really is a shame because I really think he's one of the greatest talents of this generation. And it would be, it, it really would be a sad story if we look back and at, you know, look back on this in 10 years and go, yeah, he was a great talent, but injuries ruined his career. You know, and it's interesting when you look at it because back at Dortmund, he didn't use to get as injured as he has been since he came to Barcelona. And part of that is either it's something with the medical staff, the regimes that have been put in place, whether that's how the practice is or whether that's, you know, just the intensity of the league that is too different for him. Um, let's see. What else? What else? What else? Uh, Fatis says, bro, these people are better because Neymar left to the directors and at him. Yeah, I definitely think they just play a role. You know, um, I think also not just on Dembele, but I also think I also think one of the problems with the whole Neymar thing is that, you know, it's it basically inflated the market. And that's why, you know, a player like Coutinho or a player like Griezmann five years ago would not leave for 120 million euros. That's crazy. But if you look at it from, you know, the average guy on the streets perspective, that's a lot of money, which it is. And for clubs, it is. But everything else, every, all, all the other prices have also gone up. So in perspective, if you relate, you know, in relation to it, it's actually not that much. But the problem is when you put such a hefty price tag on a player, you know, it is a lot. Um, and, you know, I, I, I still think they can succeed, but I just don't think that the pressure that you see – on these players is is in my book I, I don't think it's fair you know um so you know it really did influence the market for years and i th and I, I think that trend will continue so you know that's something to consider that's food for thought um Shashank says rafinha equals dembele's injury record hmm, interesting Subash says Kuman wants Kuman wants his players to press higher up the pitch for 90 minutes, which is a whole new dynamic to our team. Bringing in Pooj <clears throat> after 60 minutes would work really well. I agree. Um, you know, I think it's going to be very interesting because I think this Barca team does have the ability to press, but you know, depending on which manager you have and what style that manager prefers, um, you're not going to see that. So you know, hopefully that'll work because I think that's the thing Barca have been missing, and with a player like Griezmann. That's not going to be a problem. Uh, Fred's, what about Frankie de Jong? Reckon like a full Barca or Netherlands? Um, both. Um, yeah. So, you know, if you enjoyed this, do leave a like. Drop a like. Subscribe if you're new. Uh, turn on those. Turn on that bell so you get a notification every time we live stream, which will happen weekly. Um and on that note, I guess all there is left to say is thank you very, very much for tuning in. This podcast will be on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts and all that good stuff uh, probably tomorrow uh, because YouTube does take a bit to render this. So, yeah, it should be out at some point tomorrow, uh, and, and we will post the links to that. If you would like to, to you know, to listen to me talk um you can listen. You can you know listen back to the uh, to the previous episodes of the Driven Shot podcast. Again, this is season two, episode one. So every other you know you will see episode two, episode three, but that'll be of the new season. So that's definitely something I'm looking forward to, and I think this whole live system is going to work pretty well. Um. So yeah, that's that's going to be very interesting. Again, thank you very much for tuning in. Stay safe. Stay at home if you can. If you you know if you. Have, don't leave the house unless you absolutely have to. And if you do, wear a mask. If not for yourself, do it for, for everyone else. You know, let's try and get through this together. And, you know, stay safe and stay sane. And on that note, I bid you all a good night.
And thank you for tuning in. See you guys next week and bye-bye.